What I have set up here is just one of the tops of the board. This is three quarter inches of plywood. It's gone through, we ripped it with the table saw. I did that before we had the camera set up and ready to go. Uh, but you're definitely gonna need a friend. It's the same process that we use for cutting and ripping the two by fours, but just on a little bit bigger scale. So make sure you have a friend with you. The reason I have this sitting here is I wanna make sure that we're sitting perfectly square on all sides when we get our frame set up. Setting the frame up square in the first place just keeps you from having to make adjustments later on, putting more strain on your fasteners, your glue, and your top piece. Just make an overall better, stronger product. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get all of these pieces laid out. I've got some bar clamps here to help keep everything together, because again, I'm working alone. It's something that you might need. You'll need a tape measure, you'll need a pencil, You'll need your fasteners. What I've, chose, what I've chosen is a three inch common, uh, common wood screw. And then I'll obviously have my drill driver there to secure those. One important thing to keep track of is making sure that your end with the hole lines up with the hole on the other side. So make sure you have those oriented correctly and just get these laid out. So like I said, I have my my end pieces, which are nice and clean pieces of wood, separate from my cross members, which might have a couple little defects in them. So we'll get those all laid out. Before I get going too much farther and before I put my clamps on, what I want to do is take my tape measure and from the end of the board, I measure 23 and one quarter inch. on both sides, making sure to mark on the inside of that material because that is going to act as our guide to put our cross member in. So I'll get the cross member roughly oriented and I can start pushing these boards together. Now that they're roughly in place, we'll take my bar clamp, get it positioned, and just barely snug it so that way nothing falls over on you. So now that we have the clamps on, we allow, it allows us to get a little tension on these. So I'm just going through, I'm sorry you can't see me very well, but I'm just going through and I'm flushing all the corners. And the most important step while we're doing this, outside of making sure that the frame is square, is making sure that all of the boards are making good contact with our top, or in this case, the bottom. Getting our cross member lined up, good and square. Now we're flush on all sides. We have some minor adjustments to make. But at this point, with all of our boards pushed down against the bottom, or what is the actual top of the board, making sure that those are all flush, what we can do now is take a couple of our fasteners and put it in two corners. So I'm going to go with this corner that you guys can't see, and this corner. So now that I have two of the corners tacked together with those screws, now I can go through and be a little bit more aggressive with moving this exactly where it needs to be. So I want it to be as close to perfect at this stage of the game as possible, so that way when we put our top on, we don't run into any issues. The other nice thing about pre-drilling your holes is you can just take and put those fasteners in by hand ahead of time so you're not fumbling with it, especially when you're working by yourself. You don't have to worry about that screw falling out from where you placed it.
On this piece, we're having just a little bit of twisting. So what I'll do is I will go grab another set of clamps and I'll clamp it in one corner, allowing me to pull this corner over to be perfectly square. So now we've got all four of our corners done, and we're sitting nice and square on this board thanks to this clamp, and we're nice and flush. And so now we're ready to pop in our cross member. Once again, making sure that we're nice and lined up with that mark we made earlier. And so because we got the four corners all pinned down and square, when I let these clamps off, this piece is going to stay nice and square. We remove it from the base. So this is one frame down, seven more to go. I'll catch back up with you when those are done. All right, we are on to the next step of the process. So now that we have all of our frames built, we're gonna get started with our tops and getting them ready to go onto the boards. The first thing we wanna do, like with everything, is we wanna make sure we get these pre-drilled out so that way we won't have any splitting, especially in the top. We wanna make sure it's as smooth of a surface as possible. So what we're gonna do is go through, get all of these pre-drilled out, and then we're gonna go back through with a little bit larger bit and just barely tap the tops of these holes to act as a countersink. Without a countersink bit, this is one of the best ways because even if you sink that board down, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have a little bit of a lip on the top of that. And because we're gonna wrap these boards, we wanna make sure that it's as flat of a surface as possible before we get to that. So we're gonna get the camera set back up, get started pre-drilling these holes. So I've already gone through, I've already double checked all of our surfaces here. I've gone through and double checked all of our surfaces on our top piece. So I'll take the glue, I'll put a thin layer on all of the frame piece. I'll take the top, I'll set it on top, and then when I start screwing, I want to work from the center out. So what I'll do is I'll put the center screw in first, I'll put the center screw in the top and the bottom, and then I'll work from the inside out. What that helps is that keeps any bows from developing in the process. There's no perfect way to do it. You can do it from the corner and work to the other corner. You can work from the middle out. You can work from the middle out this way. You can work from top to bottom. It really just depends on how you like to do it. In my personal preference, I like to work from the center and move outwards. I feel like that gives me the best result. Another thing to just keep handy with you is a rag. Uh, a damp rag, so I have a bucket of water and a just a shop tile that I keep out here. So what I'll do is I'll get started and you guys can watch the process.
It's been 24 hours since we glued our tops down. Now that they're fully cured, we can start working with these boards again. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure out nine inches from the top, making sure I'm doing it on the correct side so where the legs go, that's where we want our hole. We're gonna measure down nine inches and one foot over, so that's gonna put it nine inches down and in the center. I recommend using a pre-drill in addition to your hole saw. You don't have to use a hole saw, you can also use a jigsaw or a manual coping saw to get this job done, but a hole saw is just gonna be a little bit faster. So I'm gonna measure down nine inches, get my marks made. Then I'm gonna measure across using those reference lines to ensure I've got the right center. So now that we have that marked out, I'm gonna use my drill to give myself a pilot hole. Now with the pilot hole, it makes going through with our hole saw just that much easier because it has this tip in the center, but it's kind of low, so it makes it a little bit tricky to peek down underneath it. So now that I'm centered up, I want to make sure I'm as squared off as possible. Definitely use your provided handle when you get your drill. A low setting is recommended, and we're just going to get going. All right, and with that, we have one down. So we're going to go through, knock out the rest of these holes, and then we are almost done. So the next thing we need to do is we need to cut off these corners so that way the leg can move freely underneath the board. There's two different ways we can do this. We can use a jigsaw and cut the radius out, or what we're going to do is we're just going to notch these at 45 degrees and then take just a little bit off the top. So I'm going to take my combination square, which I've already set to an inch and a half. I'm going to give myself a mark on each side. And then move my ruler down in my combination square, rotate my piece, and give myself a mark at 45 degrees. So this is where those lines are going to intersect, so I'm just going to cut it this way, this way, and then once that, those are done, we'll cut just a bit off the top. We'll set up some stops so that way we can get this consistently. So now that we have all of our legs cut, we've got our tops notched off, these are ready to be installed in our cornhole boards once we get them all sanded down. So that is gonna do it for our building portion of the cornhole boards. The next step in the process is gonna be to take all of our legs and all of our boards and go through and sand them down completely and get them ready for finishing. What we're gonna do, be doing with these boards is I'm gonna prime them and then paint them black and then we're having the wraps put on just the faces of them.